Gerald, first of all, just a little bit about the intensity in the Munster final. Have you recovered okay from it? I have, John, yeah. Uh, yeah, it was a tough one for sure. Um, I suppose I, I always kind of say after a match, I, I enjoy being sore because, you know, you're after working hard. And especially when you win, you never mind being too sore. You know, it's, it's, when, you don't, it's when you don't succeed or when you don't win and you're, and you're sore. That's when it's really hard to take. But, yeah, I was sore for a couple of days after. But, um, you know, it was, it was an incredible game. One of the best I've ever played in for sure. Uh, I never seen, I never seen an atmosphere like like that down in Turles anyway. Definitely not. Only Crow Park is the only only time I can ever remember it being so loud. It was just unbelievable. But uh, yeah, it was an amazing one for sure. How much enjoyment do you take from it? You know, obviously it's it's such a tight game, and to come out the other side of it again, you've had so many great victories in recent years. But that one must have been one of the sweetest ones. Definitely, yeah, it was definitely one of the sweetest ones we've ever had. Um, you know, we obviously going to extra time and it was getting dark on a Sunday evening and then it just added to the intrigue, but all on the bank holiday weekend and it started raining and then I'm sure the producers in RT were delighted with how the game went, you know, it's when Tony got the equalising point there from the sideline and, you know, just everything, the atmosphere that was there in the day and it was just, it was just unbelievable. Um, as I said, bar, bar a couple of the games in Crow Park that we've had over the years, it was definitely, it's definitely up there as one of the best ever for sure. It's me doing that, yeah. Hi, Gerald. Sure things. It's Joe Covid here from Virgin Media. I was just like, like you've referred to it there. It was incredibly tight the whole way through that game. Like there was only a couple of points in it either way until you know seventy minutes. You couldn't be separated, and then in the first period of extra time, you kind of crept ahead and you were able to maintain that lead. What would you put that down to? What kind of gave you that extra bit of edge? Was it experience or conditioning, or what would you put that down to? I think it's our our squad, to be honest. Like you know, all the lads that came on that day, we just Reedy and Boylan and Graham Mulcahy and a few more that came on that day and got us over the line because, uh, like I, I, I would say, I remember Reedy ran on when he came on maybe after 55 minutes and I was just saying to him, like when he gets on the ball, to, to, to run with the ball, use his legs, you know, because 55, 60 minutes into a game with that intensity, like players are going to be tired. Obviously, we were, I was tired at the time and when I was seeing him coming on, I've marked him a couple of times in training myself, or actually in club games, and he's, in, he's a disaster to mark. As it is, so like if I was thinking, if I was the clear opposition now, trying to mark him after 60 hard minutes already in the Munster final, it, it wouldn't be easy, you know. So um, I think it was our squad that definitely that got us over the line. The boys did really well when they came on, really got a score, Boylan got a score, you know, and a few more came on and did really well. So that's what I put it down to, to be honest with you. And it was the third draw after 70 minutes against Clare this year. Would you like to see them again sometime in the All-Ireland Championship or would you be happy to see the back of the... I don't care to be honest. I don't. If, if I suppose like there's no point in in looking towards. We obviously can't meet them in a semi final, so you know there's no point looking past the semi final uh, because that is unfortunately how you can get caught, and that's that's a sign of complacency. So I suppose we have to do our job in the in the semi final in a couple of weeks' time. We'll see how they how the rest of them get on this weekend, and uh, we're just preparing for this semi final in two weeks' time. I couldn't care less to be honest who we're playing or who's going to come out on the other side. That's all irrelevant. I just want to ask for me, with, with Keane Lynch coming back in and the squad playing so well, is, is this the strongest the squad has been since you've been part of it? Um, I would say it probably is, yeah. I would say it is. Like, you know, I, I've always believed over the years that one of our greatest strengths is our depth of our squad. You know, like we have, we'll have, we've had a couple, we've had a hard week of training now in the last week or so, we'll have another two weeks in the lead into the, into lead into the semi-final and we'll have maybe a, a, a training game next week. And like, you know, there unfortunately is, um, what is it, 26, so there's maybe 10 lads that don't even get named on a, on a, on a match day panel. And like, it's so hard for those guys that, you know, they, they're putting in just as much effort as everyone else. So, um, I've always believed that we have a very, very strong and deep squad. So, um, yeah, I would say it probably is the strongest we've ever been because, you know, we, we are quite experienced. We've gained a lot of experience now over the last number of years and, and that all helps, you know. Um, so, yeah. Thanks, million. Garod, is it getting is it getting more difficult or is it easier as the years go by, obviously, from, we'll say, from 2018 in terms of, of competing is this like obviously to you have a target on your back now you've been so successful but also at the same time look you're used to playing with each other you're used to playing big games 
I'm sure it's it's different now playing than it would have been kind of breaking onto the scene or, or winning that first All Ireland. Yeah, it probably it is. It's definitely different now than it would have been when we when we were trying to win it in 2018. Obviously, regardless of who the All Ireland champion is, that's the team that everybody wants to beat. You know, there's there's there is a target on the All Ireland champions back every single year, and and we know that because we were in a position before where we weren't that, that All Ireland champion. And you know, if you can go out and beat them, or if you meet them, that if you can beat them, there is a great chance of you being successful that year. So. We understand that, but we've always we've always looked at that as a, in a positive light. You know, when we are the ones with the target on our back, it is it's it's definitely a positive for us. Um, it's a privilege, you know, that you are the the team that everybody else wants to beat, and it's it's hard earned. I can tell you that tag. So um, probably it is a good question. Yeah, I don't know. Does it get harder or easier? To be honest, I, I always find it extremely difficult every year, no matter what, no matter whether you're the whether you're the one that everyone wants to beat or you're you're chasing back. You know, it's 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 extremely difficult to be to be in this position. Have you gotten better, do you think, at managing even the, the four-week break now, obviously, between the Munster final and the, the All-Ireland semi-final? I mean, you, you think back to 2019, not saying that it was anything in the build-up, but have things like that, have, do you think you've you've maybe nailed them down a bit more? Well, I suppose we haven't had it. We didn't have it in 2020. We didn't have it in 2021. So we haven't had it since 2019. But I say we we would have learned a lot from the 2019 four-week break. You know, to be honest with you, I think there's a lot make it as four-week break. It used to be a six-week break. I was even talking to about it, talking to a friend about it yesterday. I think it used to be a six-week break, if I'm correct, before. And there used to be a lot of media coverage around, oh, there's such a long break. To be honest with you, I, I, was, I, I thought that was one of the major benefits of winning the Munster final is that we did get a couple of weeks break. Um, you know, you could kind of relax for three or four days after the Munster final and then come back in training and uh, and have maybe like two and a half weeks of hard training, you know, before the before the All Ireland semi final and a bit of down, a bit of downtime away from the away from GA as well, where you can relax. Say this weekend we'll be training, obviously, but you can relax uh, at the times that you're not training. So I suppose to answer your question, we will see. We don't know yet. We will see, but I'm sure we've learned we've learned a lot from 2019, and we're much more experienced now than we would have been back then as well. So um, there'll be no fear of us. I have to ask you about the the goal as well, just to go back to the Munster final for for a minute, Garoad. Uh, did you have students out in the school going around playing the clip and coming up to you about it, or, or what, what's the dynamic there? I was lucky because we were finished on the Friday before the Munster final, so it was perfect timing. I'm secondary, so there were there were certain exams um, after the Munster final, so we were finished. No, so I haven't seen I haven't seen it too much, but um, I look, it was it was it was an incredible one. It's, it's I, I'd say I won't score. I, I, I would, I would hope I'm wrong, but I'd say I won't score a sweeter one than that. It was a great feeling, to be honest. Because look, I, I just with with whatever with, with everything that happened in the in the previous game before that in the group stage game, if you want to call it, Long Cusick Park, you know, it was it was a difficult enough couple of weeks for me leading into the Muscle final because every single person I wanted to meet, whether it be in school or on the street or anyone, they were all coming up to me talking to me about the obviously the red card incident in the previous game and. You know, I just found it mentally draining a bit, kind of two weeks after the after the group game. So the week of the game, I just really kind of shut myself off and and stayed as private as I could be because I do find it a little mentally draining when there is so many people coming up to you wanting to talk about the incident. I just wanted to forget. Like Sunday evening, I went home after the group game. I just wanted to forget about it and move on. You know, I was over it. I was done. But obviously, everyone I met in the in the in the next two or three weeks wanted to chat to me about that incident and it's the one thing I didn't want to talk about. So it was a little mentally draining. So it was a nice release for me to get that goal. Um, you know, after a couple of a couple of weeks that was a, a little mentally draining for me. So I won't forget it, put it that way. Just a final one for me, Garoad, because I'd be killed in work if I didn't uh, bring it up, obviously, because it's going to be massive in Limerick. You, you'd be hoping to, to be heading to, to, to the JP McManus Pro-Am on a winning vein, looking forward to an All-Ireland final. Will you, will you head out to, to it there? Oh, definitely. Yeah, without a doubt, I can't wait for it. Uh, I think it's going to be unbelievable, to be honest with you. Uh, so hopefully, as you said, we can, I can, I can be there, looking towards, uh, looking forward to an All Ireland final for sure. I'm really looking forward to that. You know, it's important to have things outside of hurling, you know, to take your mind off it. You know, there is a lot more to hurling than, or there is a lot more to life than just hurling. You know, so that is something that I'm really looking forward to for sure. Thanks, Bert. Thank you, Rod. How are you doing, John Harrington here? How are you, John? Good, thanks, good. Uh, I know you're in, big into the psychology of the game. I'm just wondering, you know, did you did you draw on certain tools you developed over the years in the last few weeks when you talk about, you know, finding it a mentally draining period maybe of your career, maybe the most mentally draining, I'm not sure, but well, what did you draw on? Yeah, it's a good question, John. It's something that would have bothered me a lot more in, in 
a couple of years ago when I was a little bit younger, a little bit more inexperienced. But look, I try to look at everything. You can, I always say, you can look at every situation as a positive or a negative. People are only people only want to come up to me and chat to me and and wish me well, you know, and and tell me that X and Y should have happened and X and Y shouldn't have happened. You know what I mean? They all had their opinions, so. It is something that it is something that would have bothered me maybe in the past, but look, you know, you just gotta you just gotta deal with it as best you can. As I said, people only mean well when they when they want to come up and, and talk to you. So um no, it did like it didn't bother me too much. I did find it a little mentally draining kinda of after the game and maybe the week after the game, but as I said, the week of the game I had just kind of forgotten about it and, and I suppose use my experience to to not myself, I suppose not put myself in that situation as, as much as possible. You know, I tried to stay as private as I could the week of the game just to just to to really focus on you know getting myself right for the game. So yeah, it was it, it was as I said it was it was a little mentally draining, but it wasn't anything that would have affected me in the in the in the couple of days before the game. When something really positive happens, then like that goal, um, is that something that that feeling that release that you felt and just that I suppose that special moment is that something you can draw on in your career going forward now in terms of visualization and stuff like that. Yeah, I suppose all these like all these moments that you have to deal with, um, you know, before games, during games are are all every single one of them are all learning experiences, you know. And again, just goes back to, you know, it goes it goes back into your mind of it's something that you can draw on in the future for sure. Like one of the games this year, I was actually I was dying sick for three or four days before one of the group games in Munster, and I actually didn't think I was going to be able to play at all. And then you just wake up tomorrow in the game and you have a trend in your body and you just get through it. And again. Just another little, another little, um, a reference point is what I call them to to draw on going into the future because you know in a, in every game you're always going to have a little bit of doubt before the game if you're ready, whatever you're dealing with you might be dealing with a little niggle you might be dealing with a little bit of sickness but you know all these little reference points that can be used in the future for sure. Just now for the All Ireland series, what will you do yourself personally just to ensure you're as mentally tuned in as possible. I mean, the physical side will be taken care of in training, but from your personal point of view, have, have you any routines now? Um, you, you probably took time out after Monster Final, but when do you start sort of getting the game face on again? Yeah, like it's just, I suppose, what what gets me right mentally is knowing that I'm physically ready, if you know what I mean. Training as hard as I can over the next two two weeks or two and a half weeks and doing everything that they ask us to do in training. And then, Bar that, just switching off completely from hurling. You know, at this time of year, I believe that, you know, nearly less is more at times. Just go to train and train as hard as you can and come home and forget about it and recover as best you can and be ready for the next day. But that's that's kind of it. Obviously, I'm a school teacher, so I'm off now. So I can really live kind of a professional lifestyle for the next, hopefully, five or six weeks. Um, so, yeah, again, like it's just using your experience to focus when you need to focus and then switch off when you can switch off. Thanks, bro. Best of luck with the rest of the year. Thanks, John. Hi, Rod. Uh, PJ Brown here at Ball 3. Hi, PJ. Good, thanks. Uh, given this is a pro- launch for Pride campaign, I was wondering if you'd seen the results that the GPA survey did back in April, found 99% of inter-county players would be supportive if a teammate came out. Um, is that your, your experience, that it would be a welcoming environment? Definitely, yeah. Um, you know, on Saturday, that's the Oh, there's just a bit of an echo there. I don't know who's coming from that. But their stats do show that, like, you know, stats show that there, there definitely is probably some um, some players that may be part of the LGBTQI community in, in GA currently at the moment. I know, like, I actually found it very interesting that there's the professional soccer player came out there recently. Um, and obviously, he's the first professional soccer player to come out and be openly, openly, uh, I think he's gay in a long time. You know, so it is, it is, I suppose that's why that's why I got involved when when um, the lads before Gosh got on to me to see what I help out with this with this uh, campaign. I said I'd love to because um, you know I'm a school teacher and you are dealing with a lot of um, I suppose young people that have have all have have all their own lives and they're kind of finding their way in life at the moment. And you know I I, I feel it's important. I I don't have a big long spiel to go on and go about it, but I just I firmly believe that you know it's every person's decision to be whoever they want to be and. I believe that's important, and I, I would hope that young people, um, you know, can choose whoever they want to be. I, th- I, I really do believe that it's important. Um, as I said, it is their decision, and I don't believe it's up to anybody else. Uh, do you think it's changed over time in, in terms of in intercounty panels, maybe in dressing rooms, that players have become a bit more conscious about the language that they would use and how it might uh, like affect other people? 
yeah, I do. I think I think, I think it's come back to education, really. You know, I think there has been a lot of education over the last number of years, and people have been made so much more aware of of that community and you know everything that goes with it, and the, I suppose the hurt that that can be caused by silly, silly language, I suppose, and silly communication, you know, towards towards that community. So. Yeah, I do think it comes back to a little bit of education around the issue, and and I suppose that's another reason why we got why Borgash are going ahead with this campaign. Again, it's all about raising awareness and, and educating more and more people about yeah, um, the LGBTQI community. You know, so again, it is it is just important to be raising the awareness around it. Yeah, I, I, like we haven't had uh, an intercounty player come out since Dunlog, what thirteen years ago now. Given that it is like players say they they would be supportive. Why do you think we haven't had someone come out in that time? I just think it's, it's, the, it's the stigma around it, I suppose. Um, you know, it, I suppose there probably still is a stigma around it. And again, going back to something that I've just said, it is that is why poor gosh are, are going ahead with this campaign, you know, trying to remove that stigma and trying to allow people to be whoever they want to be, I think is important. You know, I don't think... I, I would ha- I wouldn't it wouldn't bother. I actually have several friends who are gay and uh you know and I have very close friends and um you know I, I just always feel I just I, I really do firmly believe that you know it's up to the person to be whoever they want to be so I suppose probably there probably is still a little bit of stigma in Irish culture I don't necessarily think it's the GEA I think it's more so Irish culture but I think we are getting much better as a country over the last number of years um in terms of in terms of the the viewpoint around us um but I, I do believe that we do have a still a bit, a bit of a way to go, but hopefully, you know, that people can be more comfortable in, in talking about these things in the future. Uh, John Kiley said after a drawn Munster game with uh, Claire that there's kind of a narrative around you and how you play, which was possibly having an effect on the decision making with referees. Is that your experience? Do you think that's, a, that's the case? <laughs> I don't know, to be honest with you. You'd have to ask the, you'd have to ask the referees. But um, look, obviously, what happened below in the drawing game was unfortunate. I don't I don't believe I, I deserve to be sent off that day. I don't believe I deserve to even get a yellow card in either instance. But look, I suppose it's it's not something that I that I that I need to worry about. I suppose leading into the next game, you know, you just got to trust that. Just as I could, just as I have to trust that John and Paul and all the lads will have us as ready as possible, and trust that the lads that I'm going out in the field with that day will be doing their jobs. I just have to trust that the referee is going to do their job, and it's simple as that. You know, you got to control the controllables. There's nothing that can be done about it. It's up to them to, you know, to use their discretion to, to referee the game as best they can. And you know, I suppose you got to you got to trust that they're going out to do the best job that they can do, and that they that they will ref it as they see it. So, look. Um, do I believe, you know, that, that that they are going to try and go and do the referee the game as best they can? I do. I don't think I should have been sent off in the, in the drawing game. I think that's fairly clear to see. But as I said, it's not something that I'd be worried about going forward. Gary Wood, um, just in a, in a broader picture, even aside from um, the, the prior campaign that Borg Gosh are, are undertaking at the moment, is it easy to be an inter-county hurler? Do you find yourself under that spotlight constantly or... Do you just go about your, your, your daily life not, not trying to carry that tag? Um, well, I suppose with the success we've had in the last number of years, Jerome, so you can see it around. You can see it around Limerick at the moment. Like I've never seen so many flags out, and people have just gone mad in the last number of years because of the two years of COVID and not being able to go to games. I suppose people are mad to go to games and they're mad to chat to us about about hurling and all that kind of stuff. So. At times it can be a little bit difficult, but again, it just goes back to people just want they want to they want to wish you well as best they can, and they want to be they want to meet you and they want to talk to you about hurling and stuff like that. So uh, at times, like it doesn't bother me too much. You know what I mean? You can let it bother you if you want, but um, people people always only mean well, Jerome. And fair, ninety nine percent of people that you meet always only mean well, and they only want to wish you well. Um, but look, as I said. Like we are, we are in, in an absolutely privileged position. You know, I was on the panel for a couple of years before we were successful, and I can tell you, not too many people were coming up talking to you about Ireland. You know, because we obviously weren't going too well at the time. So, it's a privilege to be in the position that we're in. And as I said, people only mean well. So you just gotta, you gotta look at it in a positive way. And, I, and it, it won't last forever. You know, we're not stupid to realise that it will last forever. You know, everybody, everybody's time does come to an end eventually, and you know, you will be forgotten about. You will be forgotten about one day. So. Um, that's just the way it is. You just gotta, you just gotta look at it in a nice way, you know. Just in terms of on, on field action, um, I suppose you're vastly experienced in, in terms of scheduling your season. Where, where do you feel you are in terms of, I suppose, 
hitting that 100% in terms of the last couple of years in Munster Championship, do you feel you've a bit to find in terms of semi-final? Or are you moving along where you, where you would like to be? I think we're in a great position, for sure. I think we're in a super position. I think we're in a position that I would have bitten your hand off for at the start of the year. You know, we're after winning Munster. We're going straight to the All-Ireland semi-final. Um, you know, look at the two All-Ireland quarterfinals this week. They're going to be, they're 50-50. They're a flip of a kind. Um, you know, I always believe that the best route is the shortest route. It's the one with the, le- with, with the least risk. Um, so, yeah, we definitely have loads to improve on, obviously, from the, as you said, we haven't, we haven't, we haven't had a performance yet that we've been uh, extremely happy with. We've had some decent performances so far, but we haven't hit uh, everything that we wanted to do so far. So, look, we're going to Crow Park with loads, to imp- with loads. We're going to Crow Park, I suppose, unbeaten this year, but with loads of room to improve on it. In my opinion, it's the perfect situation. Um. It's a silly question, really, but you've probably seen um, the photos of the, the Limerick boys with, with the tops off that went around in the papers and on social media and stuff, and there was great crack around it. And did the lads ever talk about things like that? Uh, uh, we had a bit of we had a bit of a crack on the on the bus and home right after the monster final. The boys were devastated that it went up on social media. Mike and Sean, they were inconsolable that it went up on social media. They were disgusted that there was a picture of them. Flex and I suppose got up as social media. I know we just had, we had a bit of a crack ride on the bus afterwards, but uh, look, I suppose that comes back to all the hard work that we do in the gym, and that is the that is the that is the shape, and you know all the hard work that we have done over the last number of years to get into get into the position that we're in. So, yeah, as I said, the boys were disgusted. I, I'm sure that uh, that they were that they were pretty disappointed with that photo went up on on social media. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like I said, it sparked a lot of crack and stuff, but it also sparked a few debates and just talking about the unbelievable shape that this team is in. What what do you think, like, what, what do Limerick do that sets them apart conditioning ways from the other teams? Because it just seems so evident. I, I honestly think that, like, I always believe that there's no secret to success. Like, if you look at our panel, since about 2017, we've, uh, the vast majority of us have been on, have been on the panel now since about 2017. So there's, a, there's nearly six years of hard work and then to get us to the position that we're in at the moment. Some lads are there longer, some lads have joined us in, in, in the meantime, but the core group were there five and six years at this stage, you know, and, you know, like, I suppose when you come back at the start of a year, you think that, you know, you're starting from, you're starting from zero again, but you're not like, you know, you are, you are unfit and you need to get fit again, but, you know, things come back to you quickly because you have such a good foundation built up over the years. So I just think it's a lot of hard work over the years. I know it's kind of the boring answer, but that is genuinely why I think that we are in the shape that we're in because the vast majority of us have been with each other now for the last five or six years and, and putting in that hard work and that dedication and the consistency to it, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, you sort of talked already about like the psychology of things and how important that is. And then obviously skills pay the bills, but how important or how big an emphasis would you guys put or on conditioning? Like how important is that for a team to reach the very top? Sure, it's extremely important. You know, it's and it's everyone talks about you know the size of the size of some of our lads, but like it's not just as 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 much as the photo that went up on social media of of the boys in the dressing room afterwards. It's not just looking good. Like it's it's to be able to take the hits out in the field. You know, that's what a lot of people don't realise that they aren't really you know that just go to watch the games in a casual manner, but they don't know too much about the strength and condition size. It's been able to take the hits. Like if anyone was at the game, I'm sure some of you are at the game. They must have found like some of the hits that were going in were were unreal. Like you know, the intensity was it was an intense it was as intense a game as I've probably ever played um, outside of Crow Park anyway. Definitely. So you know, you've got to be at, you've got to be at a condition level to take the hits, not just not just give them as well. You know. So um, look, you do need to be obviously at an extremely high uh, strength and condition level to to be on an inter county panel, but um, that's just the way it is. And as I said, we have been at it for a long time now. Mm-hmm. And then just lastly for me, um, that goal, I know you already talked about it, but I was just wondering, have you ever scored anything like that before, even in training, club, underage, you know, a sort of similar? I don't think so. I don't think so. I haven't I haven't really thought about it. It's a good question, but I, I don't think so off the top of my head. It's a very unique one. Like, I actually, I remember, like, Tom obviously caught it, and I called, and he Tom, Tom said he didn't even know where I was. He just knew the vicinity that I was in, so he popped it over. And obviously it's a wet day, and... It was hard to control the ball, and I actually miscontrolled it my first touch. And then out of the corner of my eye, just out of my peripheral vision, I could see a Clare player coming in who was obviously Dermot Ryan at the time. So I knew I was going to have to, I knew he was cutting off my lane to the goal. So I just, I suppose, um, just in the heat of the moment, I just thought that was the best way to do it and flicked it over. Sure, it worked out perfectly, obviously. And as I said, it's it's something that I will I will look back on a lot um, when I'm finished. And I'm sure a lot of people will 
will refer to will refer back to over over the years. So yeah, for sure it was it was a special one. I, I really really enjoyed it. I must say. Thanks, Jared. Appreciate it. Cheers. Okay, guys, I think that's us nearly done. If there's any other questions, we probably have time for maybe one more. Could I just guess uh, one more question in there, uh, Garo? Just we mentioned the, the strength of the panel a while ago, and obviously the fact that that Kean Lynch has been missing. I mean, look, I, I know you can have as, as strong as a panel as you want, and and the likes of Carl O'Neill have done really well deputising. But how much do you miss miss a player with the the quality of Kean Lynch? And I'm sure you're all willing him on to to hopefully recover and, and be ready to go for an All Ireland semi final. Yeah, sure. Like in my opinion, Kean is is. The best, if if definitely in the top two or three players in the country, in my opinion, he probably is the best hurler in the country. Like you take the best hurler in the country out of any other county panel, take the take any other county panel's best hurler out of their panel, and you know I'm not too sure would they have dealt with it as well as we do. But look, we always have a next man next man up mentality. You know that's just the name of the game. People are going to go down throughout the year. They're going to go down at different times, and you know that, I suppose that's linking back to one of my answers earlier about the depth of our squad. You just got to trust that it is the next man up, and the next man up is going to do the best job he can do. But look, anyone losing a, a player of the caliber of Kane Lynch is is going to be affected. It's as simple as that. We're not, we're, we, we, you'd be lying if you said that you wouldn't be affected by it. But, you know, you just got to deal with it as best you can. Injuries are part of the game, and that's the way it is. And we've always had an next man up mentality. That's just the way you have to be. But, um, look, oh, he's, he's doing well. So, hopefully he, can, hopefully, he can keep making good strides, and, and he'll be back, hopefully, sooner rather than later.